eight. Uh, today, the big day has happened, uh, or is about to happen. This is part three and the final in our series on building your own aquarium overflow box. Um, today, we're going to go over the actual plumbing of the unit. Uh, we've been waiting on a few parts to come in so we can finish this build. Uh, but let's get to it, and uh, I will walk you through some of the things to get uh, your actual plumbing set up. Okay, so our second YouTube has came in, uh, as well as our bulkheads. Now, with these bulkheads, uh, these are threaded inside and out. Uh, another thing they have that I didn't see with most of the others, there is double rubber o-rings one for the top and one for the bottom on most of them they just come with one at the top that sets against your piece but I didn't quite trust that um, also we went ahead and bought two strainers that screws into those threaded ports now the reason for these is is you don't want uh, plant life uh, you know any kind of debris or anything going down in this possibly clogging your line now overlook the glue marks I've still got to sand some of that up and clean some of that up make it look decent but um, had a problem with the actual glue not wanting to work right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these bulkheads I'm gonna take those two rubber o-rings and I'm going to place them on the sump or not on the sump excuse me on the overflow box I'm going to place them on there where I want these to go now at the same time you have to make sure which the o-rings line up with the outside of your bulkheads you don't want to get it too close to the edge line it up so you can drill your holes now something else that we or I didn't do when I was doing this and I'm gonna have to down the sides of these YouTubes on each side I'm gonna have to put a piece of plexiglass all the way down so that way there'll be water get caught when it comes out of here it'll get caught and bring the level up you know the plates will be right here the level of water will be up to here even if you know the pump shuts off the water will still stay in here which will keep our siphon so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line these up and as I'm famous for, I'm going to eyeball this. You can make measurements if you'd like. Pull my paint marker out. And I'm going to make sure I don't mess up my measurements here. There's one. And there's two. Okay, so the holes are drilled. Um, I took my handy dandy file after I cut them out, cleaned up the edges, smoothed them down. That way there's nothing that could uh, potentially cause a leak. The whole saw that you're going to want to use, uh, this is a bimetal saw. I had a whole kit of them. I bought at Harbor Freight. I've used them on metal, wood, plexiglass. Uh, you're going to want to be easy going in with this because once this bit falls through, it's actually going to contact that glass and if you hit it too hard it's going to crack so turn your drill down adjust it with your finger however your drill works cut it out and you see what it looks like once it's you know done went through it once you get down to where it's laying on the plexiglass reverse your drill so the saw bits are not you know actually cutting first off reverse them so that way it'll get you a groove started that groove will help the bits for to cut and not gouge and then once it goes just sit there and slowly let it go through you'll see the plexiglass potentially start to melt there's some of this already melted um, you'll see it start to potentially melt and then eventually it'll just go right through the hole all right so we've got that done now we've got our bulkheads our seals and our nut to go on it what I'm gonna use I don't know how well you can see it but GE 100% uh, silicone all purpose you want to get the all purpose there's other brands of this with different colors and stuff like that on the label but you want to make sure that it doesn't say mold resistant mold resistant there's other chemicals in there that can affect um, 
affect your uh, fish. This here, I've used it on every tank that I've done. Uh, I use it for resealing tanks. It holds up really well. Uh, this is 100% clear, so you know nothing to affect anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and put me a small. I'm gonna just put a really. When I say a small amount, I mean a really thin amount of silicone on this. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to go all the way around. I'm gonna dust a little bit on each side. And then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to rub this around. I don't even want a whole lot. I just want something to make a contact of a seal. You ain't got to do this. If you trust the rubber, go right ahead. I'm not a very trusting person. Take your seal, run it on to your bulkhead. What you're going to do is you're going to take and run it through. i got big hands, so this is going to be fun. Run it through press it against the bottom then I'm gonna do it again now hold your bulkhead up in there slide your next ring on you're gonna screw this up on here you're going to tighten it down you don't want that gasket to bow out so I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit and then I'm done uh, then I'm just gonna show you I'm going to show you the one, and then I'm going to put the other in. We're going to come back, and uh, we'll see about these inner baffles. If not, I'll show you the finished product. Uh, but this is going to be pretty much all there is to plumbing these things. And then whatever you decide, whether you want an internally threaded fitting to lead out to your sump, what hose you want, that's all up to you. You can actually get one that'll screw over the top of this and just has an opening for PVC, just uh, one inch PVC to slide in. Or you can get one that screws up inside of it, has a bar fitting on the end that you can put vinyl or nylon hose on, run it out to your sump. That's completely up to you. Okay, um, so I did a lot off camera that you didn't see. Um, <clears throat> so let me go over that first and then I'll go over our next little area here. Uh, the one thing that you didn't see is the two siphon dividers that I put in. Now, obviously, it's not soaking wet. I wanted to leak test this to make sure it was holding water before you know, I went any further forward. Um, what you see here are two uh, sponge filters. So what we're doing now, besides cleaning up a puddle of water, is we're going to take quarter inch tubing and two shutoff valves. Um, and we're going to get our siphon tube put uh, the, the uh, actual priming tubes in the top. I went to Lowe's and I picked these up. This here is a quarter inch uh, vinyl on and off valve. And then I bought now this is the amazing part. I bought 30 feet of uh, quarter inch vinyl tubing. I got it for five dollars. What we're going to do is we're going to take our tubes and we're going to mark those tubes where we want that vinyl tube to come out. And what this is going to do for is so that way you can pull a suction and actually prime these two U tubes. Okay, so we got our holes marked, which I should have used something besides a paint marker. It's rubbing just a little bit so we're going to wipe that off. We're going to drill our hole at the top dead center of the YouTube. That way we can get a suction of the side from the one pulling over to the other side. Don't punch all the way through and try to keep on track because it is a little sideways, just like our mark I made. Are plexiglass for 
to this area is under a lot of stress or you know from having to be bent into the shoe shape so it's really delicate so I should have thought about that earlier but nonetheless it's fixed use the pin style soldering iron and you can just heat it up pop a hole right through it wallow it out a little bit and then take a knife and trim up the edges the lines are in with our cut off valves at the top now you put these hoses in use a little bit of crazy glue crazy glue is aquarium safe once it's dry so we can get that out of the way if you don't believe me research it um, you don't have to have no special glue just regular old crazy glue will be fine and once you put these in they need one need to be dead center two they need to be pulled all the way to the edge of that hole reason for being is if you pull water and that hose is down then it can't evacuate every bit of air out of this tube so what you're going to do is you're going to take your hose you're going to turn it straight let's see make sure i'm still in camera you're going to turn it straight and then you're going to pull the vacuum suck it to the top of the tube until the air bubble disappears shut the valve off but you see that air bubble is almost gone all right do the other tube fish tanks on and there you have it okay so now <clears throat> it's time to plumb the overflow box now my sump is in behind this wall in a neighboring room's closet um, the reason I've done that is is I will hear no water whatsoever um, if I do it'll be minimal I told you I got bulkheads that had threads on the inside and out the, the reason I done that is I didn't want hard PVC to plumb to the wall so I could pull this tank out if need be you know to do anything behind it or whatever so Lowe's this tubing I think it was five dollars for a big long piece of it all my fittings and then I have my screw on bulkheads that has an o-ring which is not on this it's on the other side uh, that screws to the wall and bolts in most people says don't use Teflon tape on uh, plastic fittings because it will you know break the fittings or whatnot that's if you don't use your head and you put a ton of Teflon tape on it while we're filling up the tank, we're going to go ahead and pr we prime this, uh, the actual, I'll get it in a minute, the siphon break in the back. We're going to put a little bit of water in the weir, go ahead and get that in there. So that way we can get our siphon started before the water makes it to the top. Okay guys, we are about to have run over. It's starting to come up to the top. We should see water running over any minute now. Once it does, we're going to go to the sump room and watch. And there we have it. Water's coming over. I'm hoping it's at the level I want. And here we go. She's starting to fill. And here she comes into the sump. Now, you hear the noise that's putting off. That's the reason I put this into this closet. You also get to see in this video my sump start to work for the first time. Now, the water level is going to come up, meet at the top of that baffle, and then flow over into the skimmer chamber. Once we get all the way over to where our pump's at, then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pump and shut the water down. I need or shut the water hose down because I need to get my level set all right so now it's done started to come over to that wall so you see level level comes down now what's gonna happen is is it's flowing under that wall now I've also got that overflow there coming off the skimmer it's gonna flow over there too now so far I see no leaks coming from those pipes so we're good there so while that's filling this is where 
I run my pipes in. Now I've got two cutoffs on this. If I want to slow the flow down, I can on the drain side. And then on the inlet side, going back up to the tank, I can slow it down as well. Here we go, about to come over. And there's to the bubble wall. Once this gets about halfway up this tube, I'm going to go ahead and start the pump. Okay. So, everything is up and running. Pump is running. I put me a uh, brake siphon hole, but obviously that pump that I have versus the uh, how thin that nozzle is, it's letting uh, it's letting water be backed up. So it's going to spray out of that hole. The weir is working absolutely perfect. Let water flow in over my U-tubes and into the filter or into the, the catcher. Now you can see it's already caught some stuff on this end and didn't let it make it to the other end. Now if this lets anything by, we'll go to the other side. Now this is where my sump connectors are on my wall labeled. Let's go in here to the sump room. And everything is working as planned. So we have it putting in water here from the spray nozzle, running down, bio balls still floating. This is the heater chamber, obviously. And then here is that cyclone skimmer. I cranked it up just to you know, let it run a little bit and see what it does right now there's not no salt in the tank so the salinity is not high enough for it to actually start you know them bubbles to be thinner and more fine but it works good into the other chamber where i'm gonna have more biological media and then our bubble wall now let's see if i can get it on here if you can see there is the bubbles coming down and they don't make it all the way to the bottom where they go under and into the pump area so no bubbles get flowed back into the system but everyone that is the conclusion of part three and our how to build an overflow box uh, make sure that you like and subscribe the more likes i get the better off i am also the more you know subscriptions I get better off I am hit the little bell for notifications that way whenever I come up with another build that I want to do that'll help you all out in the future um, y'all will be prepared for it and see it in your notifications but for now y'all have a good day this is Morningstar Aquatics and I'm Nate and y'all have a great day